Alright, welcome back guys. So, while I was away, I was slowly working on the inventory system. Um, here and there, I didn't really spend too, too, too much time on it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how to create one. So, as you can see, when I hit the menu icon here, a nice little inventory uh, screen will pop up. Our inventory is filled with um, items that are in our or that are inside our of our inventory. There's little icon numbers there that show you how many we have. And if I select one, you'll see a little icon with a plus um, appear on your screen, and I will follow the mouse. And then, if I were to click on an item, an area where it can be interacted with, it will actually spawn on the field, and then it will update how many we have left inside our inventory system. And it also works um, like so. Um, it, it will take the position of the player and also add it. And it will also remove it from the inventory. Give me one second. All right, it's gonna go for all items. So whether it's a placeable item or a seed, we can do whatever we want. And then I'm also gonna show you how to like exit out of that state by a, either a press of the button or by changing the state. So as you saw there, whoops. As you see here, I have um, this icon stated here or I'm in the placeable object. But if I go to till, you can see now that I can till and the sprinkler is no longer active and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff today. With that being said, my children, let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be incredibly long because I did a lot of crap. But I think I'm going to start off with the inventory system. No, it's not the inventory system. The uh, the state machine says I've added a couple of things to it. So, yeah, let's start there. Um, first thing first, in my all states, I added a brand new inventory and a place object. These are gonna be added to the states, and then I just added them as well as to our state list here. And then, of course, the current state names also needs that. That way, when we are bouncing around between our inventory, excuse me, our states, um, it will be able to grab whatever state we're in and then display it to us. I'm gonna go down here. Okay. Down here, I added a change state to plant state and then change state to placeable object state. Um, these are gonna be called in another script. And all it's gonna do is change whatever state we're in. So if we ever grab a seed, then we're gonna be in our plant state. And if we ever grab a plantable, uh, excuse me, a placeable object, then we're gonna be in the placeable object state. And then it's just gonna update what state we're in. Um, these here are, is a function that's going to clear out whatever state that is. So all it's doing is it's going to the node plant and then it's gonna emit a signal for us for both the place object and the plant. These are these are states within the state machine. As you can see here, so it says plant. This is going to plant right here. It's gonna look for this signal and if that signal is ever triggered, it's going to do something. In this case, it's going to clear the states. I don't know why it says plant states. Oh, clear plant and place states. So yeah because that's exactly what it's doing. Since I explained that, um, let's actually go into the plant state and the placeable state. So some of the stuff is the same from before, but I'd added a couple of things. Um, added two signals here, remove mouse icon, and then the change state. Um, this one's self-explanatory. Whenever this thing is uh, emitted or triggered, it's gonna just remove the the icon from our mouse here. So as you can see here, when I click on this here, oops, when I click on, okay, what the hell is going on here? Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that. You should be able to, to uh, select it with your mouse as well, but whatever. Um, as you can see, this little icon here is gonna be the one that's gonna be removed when I have that symbol, or that, that excuse me, that signal um, fired and then obviously this is just going to change the state to another state such as the water state or the till state or even the placeable object state and when that happens it's also as you can see here state has changed 
it's going to fire off that signal. That way we can get rid of it. Okay. Um, I have changed a lot of this code here. So just ignore this for now. Um, that's not too important. Um, all I did here was add a couple of conditions. And all those conditions are is going to check the player's inventory. It's going to check the amount of whatever seed I currently have. And if it's ever zero or less, remove the icon. And then this right here is um, just a key press. It's the P key. I just assigned it to that. And then whenever I press this, it takes the seed, turns it back to null, and it emits the signal again. Now I do have up here the transfer current seed, and all this is going to, all this does is, let's see if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, so I have a function in here that's going to be called when I, uh, whenever I call the inventory system. Um, it's going to look and find out what seed I currently have. And then it's going to tr give. It's going to take that seed, and it's going to give it to the transfer to current seed. And all this is doing is just allowing me to place it in here, and then I can actually access it throughout other places, other places within my script. That's all that's for. Um, as you can see, there's some weirdness here. I'm going to explain this. Um, this that I what I use is what's known as an F string, if I remember correctly, or a format string. And what this allows me to do is it. It allows me to take a path and then with these two brackets here it's telling me or telling Godot that this item here or whatever's within these brackets is gonna is gonna be a different string so all it's gonna do is go to wherever I tell it to it's gonna look through this this folder so in this case it's gonna go to the inventory objects which would be here inventory objects is going to go through all of these so it's saying inventory objects and then whatever would be in these brackets minus the dot tn tscn which is the um which is the scene files i want you to find these names within those scenes and all these these scenes are or the way it's going to get those is from the current seed. Excuse me, the current seed. As you can see here, it says gotten seed. It's going to say find seed, which is what this variable is here. And then I want you to format. And then all I'm saying is whatever the seed to plant was, or whatever this particular uh, string is, you can name this string whatever you want. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, but whatever that string is, I want you to replace it with whatever this current string is, excuse me, whatever this current seed is. So this current seed is going to be a name. It's going to either be apple seed or peach seed. And then all I want you to do is take that, that name and place it in here, depending on what's being selected, and then give me that file back. Then all I'm doing here is, uh, like I said before, I'm taking whatever that seed is. So whether it be the apple seed scene or the peach seed scene, um, just give it to this transfer current seed. Uh, variable that way I can use elsewhere and then from there um, if the inventory of whatever that seed is is as long as it's greater than zero meaning we actually have one um, create a new variable called new seed um, and then that's going to be from the gotten seed which is this entire string format here or whatever that file was that we grabbed I want you to load it and then I want you to return it to me that way I can use it later um, since I have told you about the transfer seed, let's go all the way back up here. Um, since you know now this is the current seed, all it's doing is checking to make sure that whatever seed we have is greater than, um, excuse me, is less, if it's less than zero, just to remove the icon because we don't have the item anymore. So the player shouldn't be allowed to add anymore and we want to give them a visual signal that they can't. Um, I believe I just, Took all the the old code and placed it in a new. Let's see here. Yeah. So this used to be in the entered, but I took all that code because it was getting kind of crowded and just put it in a new script or excuse me a new function. Um, it's got the same parameters. It's looking for the tile map and it's looking for the tile data. So it's just going to check our state, make sure there's no seeds in it. 
and then it's going to make sure that it's within a plantable tile and then after that it's going to wait for us to, to press the accept key and it's also going to check to make sure we actually have seeds in our inventory and if we have all that all it's going to do is instantiate that seed again um, it, it's getting that current seed because it was transferred over as you can see here transfer current seed and then it's going to take a, that seed it's going to give us a new instance of that seed it's going to get um, the tile map it's going to find the node called all plants if you remember yeah it's getting the uh there's a i forgot all about this <laughs> there's a node within the tile map that we you know that we instantiate called all plants and that's exactly where this plant state is dropping them off in. So it's just saying, yeah, get get the tile map, find that node with all the plants, and just add it within there. That way later on we can run code, it'll go through all the children, and then we can do weird stuff with it. Okay, and then after that, it's just going to go to the inventory, the player, find out what seed we have, and then it's just going to get rid of one of the amounts from there. Um, I guess I should have showed you the inventory. I'll do that right after I'm done explaining this one. Because um, it, it's it's super straightforward. And then after that, um, it's just going to get the new seeds, have a permission, uh, excuse me, a position. And then it's going to find out what tile that is on within the strike box. And then it's going to drop it right into that position. Something I should also mention is this this code is only ran if the current seed is not equal to null. So it will never crash um, because of this this stipulation. So if it ever runs this code and, um, for example, you didn't have this, the very first thing it's going to look for is the transfer current seed and it's just going to crash the game because it doesn't exist. Okay. Next thing up after that is uh, plant with the mouse. This is pretty much the exact same thing as we just showed up here. The only difference now is we're using the mouse coordinates, which is what this is. This variable m mouse, excuse me, m post is mouse position. Get the viewport, get the mouse position, then after that, calculate the mouse position within the tiles of the tile map. And then after that, it's going to find what that tile data is and just going to make sure that it's. Um, it's a it's plantable. It's one of the plantable ones if I remember correctly. Right? I think so, yeah. Tile data, get tile cell data one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then it's, it's gonna calculate it to make sure that it's within the, the actual tile square itself. Then if we do have that data, uh, find the tile the find the soil type. So all that's gonna do is just get the data from the soil or the tile map to make sure that it's one of the tillable soils that we have and that there's no seed there and it's within one of those um, if it's in within that list that we had created of one two three and four remember these are all the soil types that we have whether it's just regular soil if it's watered uh, dried and so uh, excuse me dried and fertilized and then this one is wet and fertilized and if it has all that good jazz then plant the seed within the position but this time we want to get the mouse position. And it also, again, just removes one of those things. So yeah, that's that. Now to that, uh, I explained this already. And then this is just get mouse icon. And then all this does is the exact same thing as we did before with the, um, what is it called? This is gonna be called within the inventory if I remember correctly, and then um, it's going to find an icon. This time it's going to be going through our inventory sprites, which is all the way down. Inventory item sprites down here. So it's going to find the apple seeds, the peach seeds, and the small sprinkler PNG. And as you can see here, inventory item sprites, inventory item sprites, icon.png. So I'm telling it I need a PNG. And that PNG's name is going to be whatever this get icon is. And then this here just gets the mouse icon scene, which is this. I'll explain. I'll show you that in just a second. 
and then it's just to instantiate that scene and then add it. That way it's within that scene itself. And then this here will change that icon to whatever icon we have. So actually I'm gonna go in there right now and show you what's going on with this. So I said that it's gonna go into the mouse icon scene and load it, which is this scene right here. It's just two different um, texture recs. One is going to be the actual icon itself, which is what you see is the sprinkler. And then this one here is going to be the plus. That way the player knows that they're they're adding something to here. And all I'm telling it to do is that there is a function. If we go back to the plant state here. All I'm telling it to do is load in that scene. So it's going to load in the mouse icon scene. Um, what is this? Then it's gonna instantiate it, and then we're gonna add it to our map, and then we are going to tell it to go inside this scene here and find this change icon um, function, and then change the icon to whatever this is. And if you go into our mouse icon here and go into our script, you can see there's a change icon and then the get icon and all it's saying is whatever this texture is, change it to load, whatever that icon is, and then return it. That way we have an object for ourselves. Then after that, no, this is from before. Okay, so like I said, let me go back into the inventory, the actual inventory, because I didn't show this off. Um, this is all hard coded. Um, so yeah. Um, I just gave it some random values just to see if it worked. So I got a small sprinkler, I got a peach seeds and an apple seeds. These names here have to match whatever you're calling, um, whether it be the scene or the PNG or whatever, because these keys are going to be are what's called, and then we're gonna we're gonna convert those into strings. And when those conversions happen. Um, and we place them within. We place them within these brackets here. Um, it's going to grab what we we call. So it's it's important that these are named exactly identical. So if they're capital, make sure they're capital. If there's any spaces or underscores, make sure they have those spaces and underscores. Then here. Okay, I guess I didn't explain what this actually is. I keep thinking that everybody's watching the freaking Metroid video. <laughs> And um, that's not the case. Um, anyway, I've created a global script, and um, I created a global script, and then I just created a simple variable for the player inventory, and then I created a dictionary. And all dictionaries are is it has a key, and then whenever this key is called, it's going to grab whatever variable or object or whatever it is that you placed it within here, and it's going to grab it. So in this case. All I did was I created a dictionary, and then within that dictionary, I created another another dictionary. So there's two dictionaries here, or I think they're called nested dictionaries. So whenever the sprinkler is called, it's going to go through there, and it's going to find what its amount is. It's going to find out what its value is, and it's going to find out what its type is. So these, again, like I said, are all hard-coded. Um, they don't really matter. Um, this was just for testing things. Um, I never got to the value. That was for to test later on if there's like a store or whatever, you can get money. So in this case, the sprinkler would be worth $100. The seeds would be worth 20 and 15 And then these types will tell Godot, or tell our game, I should say, what type of object it is that we've gathered. So if it's a zero, it's just going to be a placeable object. And if it's a one, then it's a plantable object. So... There's that. And then if you don't know how to do um, global scripts or an auto load script, pretty sim simple. Uh, just go into your project settings, go into auto load. Um, well, I guess I should explain. You need to create a script first. And then once you have your script created, you go here, you go locate that script. And then you click on here. And then when you hit open, it's going to add it here. Or he's going to place it here, and you can just put add, and then it'll drop down right here. In fact, let me just show you. Open. This is here, and then you can just add, and then boom. But I don't want that there, so I'm just going to delete that. Not necessary. Okay. So that takes care of the plant state. 
<sighs> Next up would be the placeable objects. They're pretty much exactly identical to, to that of the plant state. The only difference I think, oh no, they both have a ready. Okay, yeah, um, I, I forgot to explain that. Um, at the ready, I have a connect to the change state. Uh, and then after that, it's just going to call the state has changed. That way, this becomes a null, and then this signal is em emitted. Um, I have it at the ready function. That that way, um, whenever they're loaded in, and you change that state, it's going to read it instantly and see um, what state it's in, or if the state has changed. In that case, you know, remove the icon and swap it out. And like I said, the place object state is essentially the exact same thing, um, except this time we are using the mouse, uh, not the mouse, the sprinkler, which I changed a bunch of code in. Uh, don't worry, I'll show you how to, whoops, I'll show you all the code changes in that later. But um, it has the exact same signals. And then this one here, instead of a transfer seed, I have a transferred object data. And then I don't remember, yeah, I think I needed this for something else. Load, loaded, placed, placeable object. I don't remember what this was for. Let me see here. Place on ground. Place on ground. Oh, I see. This is what's to instantiate it. Okay. Anyway, give me one second. So, okay, good. Okay. So again, once we're gonna have the interstate. Um, I don't think anything has changed except I added the transferable object data. Um, not being equal to null that with this triggers um, and then we have a place on ground function and a place on mouse function it does exactly the same thing as the plant state gets a mouse um, position and then it checks to see if we have the object or not and then it's also going to check if we have a mouse click then here it's just going to make sure that our object here is instantiated. It's going to remove the the amount from our inventory. It's going to add the child, and then it's going to change the position to the tile map. Now here, you can see here, just passing that parameter of the path tile map. That way, you can do the calculations of each entire, each and every single cell, and then place that object on the the field. And yeah, same thing with this here. So it's gonna find the object, does the exact same thing, it's just an F string. Um, and then it just passes on the transferable object to past object. That way, or excuse me, the, the transferable object becomes the past object, that way we can grab it in other areas of our code. Returns the icon, same thing with the mouse, does the exact same stuff. And then the state has changed, does the exact same thing as before. But it just removes our ob our placeable object um, sprite, and that is that. And we also have here as well the button, which is the P key, to make sure that we can delete out of that. That way, the player has a way to get out of that particular mode. Okay, I think that is a quick rundown of those two things. Let's actually get onto the inventory. So I don't think I. So like I said, let me go back to the inventory here, inventory screen. The inventory screen is 100% super, super basic. So all I have here is a canvas layer. This is just to make sure that um, it appears at the top of, or in front of all of our objects within the scene. So we don't have to worry about um, index layers or anything like that. Then I have a background here. This background could be pretty much anything you want. I just made like, a super basic wooden texture. Then we got a button. This button is going to exit out of the menu when it's pressed. We have a signal to that. And then here we have, I know you can't see it. Let me, uh, can I go here? Visibility, yeah. Let's just lighten this up a little bit. I have, as you can see here, a panel or I have a grid container, and this grid container is going to have 
all of our items, all of our objects, and all of our slots within here in a nice little organized fashion within the texture box that we have. All right, so I forgot to mention this when I was recording the first time, so I'm gonna mention it right now. Um, inside the box, or excuse me, inside the grid container, um, there's gonna be an option here that says columns in it. Um, I have it set to five. Um, it's set to one by default, so just make sure that's five. If you don't set it to five, um, it's gonna give you some funky results, as you'll see right now. Um, I have it set to two, so it's giving me two columns, and then it's pushing it down and creating new rows. So that's all this is, it's just allowing us or telling this grid that it's gonna allow five columns before it creates a new row. Um, sorry about that, completely forgot to mention that, but I'm mentioning it right now. Okay, back to the video. Sure. Um, yeah, let me just pop that back on. And that's just gonna make sure that everything is um, organized for us when they are, when it's populated. So let's go into the code here. It's a lot of code. New inventory screen. Oh my god, this is a nightmare. Um, yeah, you know what? Before I, I sh show you this, let's go to something a little easier. <laughs> and that is the uh, slots that I created. So all these slots are, they're like, they're supposed to symbolize open boxes or open crates that have items inside of them. And all this is, is it got a margin. And all the margin is going to do is make sure that um, when it's populated with inside this grid, this grid container here, that each of its items are the same distance apart. That way there's no overlap. Then here is a slot icon. All it is is a simple texture, a texture rec. And it just has this simple sprite, which is the open box, like I said. And then here, HL just stands for highlighter. And I probably am going to remove this because all it does is when the mouse is above it um, or off of it, it just highlights the box, but there's no items within it. Um, as you can see, I have some signals here. This was going to be used to um, remove the icons if you, the player had chosen. So let's say you were within your inventory here, you chose this. Um, you chose the sprinkler or whatever, and you're like, you know what, I don't want to do that. And you could just, we're going to select this, and then the um, sprinkler would have um, disappeared. But I did not figure out how to do that, so just ignore that. Um, all the slots are doing right now is just able to highlight if the mouse is on it. Um, these are going to be added to the inventory when we call it. And that's within this script right here. So I just wanted to make sure that I can get that out of the way before I start explaining all this other crap. Okay. Um, I guess I can also explain the items. So the inventory items here, all this is is a center container. It just makes sure that um, it's within the center of whatever object it's currently being parented to. In this case, it's going to be parent to that slot that I had just showed you, so it should always wind up in the middle of that slot. Um, here we have an item button, um, and there's a signal to it. Whenever uh, the button is pressed, uh, we want something to happen. In this particular case, we want to be able to call whatever object it is that we have. Um, I just have the sprinkler as a default, but it changes when the code is, or when the inventory is being called. Then here we have an icon, which is the sprinkler itself. We have a label. All this label is, I know you can't see because it it's really blurry, but this label is literally just how, it's just the amount that we have. And then again, we have the highlighter sprite. So if we go into here, you can see, um, I have a signal here to use items. So all that says is that whenever the signal is uh, fired, we're gonna call to the inventory system and say, hey, we want this item or this object. Um, yeah, give it to us. Then down here I have an item name. And all this item name is for is to um, essentially when we're looking through um, our inventory system, we need to know what the item name is. And then whatever item name 
um, that we have. We need to return it. That way, um, that way we can we know which item we have. So once this is called from the inventory, it's going to say if it's a sprinkler, an apple seed, a peach seed, a hoe, or a watering can, and that that way it will it will grab that particular item. Here, just checking if it's hovered or not. Um, all that means is that if our mouse is above the icon that we're we're currently looking at, it just highlights it. That's all that's doing. So this here um, in the ready function, we have um, this get note here. It's going to get the label. It's going to get the text, and then all it's doing is is going to look through the inventory, get the player inventory. Find out what that item name is, whether it be the sprinkler, the peach seeds, or these cherry seeds, and then it's going to find the amount. And then we need to convert that into a string, that way it can display. And then we want this to be hidden automatically, which is the highlighter. Um, we don't want we don't want the highlighter to be hi we don't want any of the buttons to be highlighted or any of the objects to be highlighted unless we are um, currently above it. And then here is if the item has been hovered and we have the accept button pressed. So all that's saying is if we have, whoops, give me a second here. So all this is saying is when the item is highlighted like this and we press the accept button, we get the object that we want. That's all that's saying. And then I'll explain what that's for. And this right here, um, on texture rec, um, mouse entered and mouse exit, it just hides and and shows the highlighter. And this one here is if the item is focused, it also has the hover on, that way it's highlighted. Um, this lets the player know that, um, give me a second here. This lets the player know, as you can see here, which item is being highlighted or which item is currently being selected. And then whenever we press the accept button after that, we will get that object. And this here is just doing the opposite. So if it's false, just hide the highlighter. And then it's going to, if the item button is pressed, it's going to t update the amount that we have. And then it's going to emit a signal called use use item. And then that's gonna be sent back to the inventory system. So it grabs our um, the item that we we chosen so whether it be the sprinkler or the PCs or whatever okay okay future me here um, when I was recording um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna add this but probably in this this part where I kind of click on these um, icons um, when I was recording I kind of click on these icons with the mouse um, and the reason for that is because I put the wrong signal so in the uh, inventory item here, where you have your button, this signal, let me just disconnect this right here, shouldn't be pressed. It should be the button down. So when you hit this, connect, it's gonna give you this. It can only connect to a script. So connect to that. And then you should have um, the name of the button that you have. So in my case, it's on item button. And then it's gonna say uh, button down. And then all you have to do is just add this code here. So all this is going to do is update the inventory, and then this is going to emit the signal. So um, whenever the mouse presses the icon that you want, it's going to fire off the signal and grab you the item. This is just to give the player um, either to give the player options. So if they are playing with mouse and keyboard, they can use the mouse, or if they have a controller, they can just select with the key presses. Okay, that's all I want to add. Um, now back to past me. Okay. Now, for the moment, I have been dreading explaining the actual inventory system. Give me a second here. Okay. So there is a lot of things going on here. Um, first things first, I added was a signal for inventory closed. This thing's gonna fire off whenever the inventory gets turned off. So you can see here, um, and then whenever that is closed, it's going to unpause the screen and it's going to queue free that menu. So um, that inventory box gets um, deleted from the scene whenever this thing is fired. 
Then here I have an onReady variable. It's just going to have the items to grab. In this case, it's going to grab the inventory item, which is here. This inventory item is what it's grabbing right off the right off the bat. And then the next thing that it also has is the get slots, which were the little boxes that I had showed you earlier, slot containers. So yeah, it's grabbing this item as well. So whoops. So that's all that's doing. Then here, I have a hard code. It's hard coded, but um, off the right off the bat, I want this is the slot amount. So later down, you're gonna I'm gonna go into the function that creates these slots. This just lets the this just lets Godot know how many slots I want when I press the inventory button. So as you can see here, I got ten. I can do as many as I want without it crashing, as you can see here. Um, now, as you probably noticed, <laughs> um, the box doesn't expand with that. Um, and the reason being is I only want it five. So if you want it to expand dependent on this, then you can either A, just make this inventory box bigger by just grabbing this and just, you know, whoops you know, grabbing it and doing some weird shit like this. Or, um, let's say you were gonna upgrade your boxes or whatever. Um, let's say you had a six, and then depending on that will depend on the size of that inventory thing. Um, don't worry about effort, don't worry about iterations, and don't worry about this just yet. I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, so in the ready function here, I have two functions. I have create slots and then get inventory items. Both are pretty self-explanatory on what they're going to be doing. Let's go down here. So here in the create slots, all it's doing is going to get those slots for me. So I'm just saying 4x in range of the slot amount. So in this case, I want you to create a variable of x and make, uh, I want you to go through a loop five times. Um, I want a variable called new slot. And then you're going to get the slot, which is this right here. I want you to instantiate that, and then I want you to get the node of the panel group, and I want you to add a child. And since this is a box container, it's gonna be a grid container, and this has um, a margin in it, um, it's gonna just fit nice and neatly within that box. Uh, we'll get to that later. And then the next thing we have is get inventory items. Again, super self-explanatory. This is just gonna get all the items um, within our inventory. And if that's ever zero, it's not gonna give it to us. So here I have a for loop. So for X in our inventory, get the player inventory and our keys. So in this particular case, we have three keys, which is the sprinklers, the peat seed and the apple seeds. So it's gonna go through that three times and it's gonna find each of those things and say, if the inventory of the player so whichever one that it's on, so it's gonna be the first key, the second key, and the third key, or excuse me, it's gonna be zero key, the first key, and the second key. Um, whatever that amount is, if it's if this amount is greater than zero, then I want you to create a new variable called new item, get items to grab, which is right here. It's gonna grab this item right here. This is getting on my last numbers. It's gonna get that item right there. It's gonna instantiate it. And then that item, as I said before, has a signal and I want it to connect to the signal use item. As you can see here, connect to this uh, uh, signal here, use item. And if it ever, if this is ever uh, fired, I want you to I want you to call this function, or yeah, this function here, called select the item, and then I want you to bind this, the name of whatever that is, and how to convert it into a string, because remember, these are these are keys right now. So in this particular case, it's gonna be, it's gonna say X, so the first one is gonna be the small sprinkler, the second one should be the peach seeds, and then the third one is gonna be the apple seeds. And then, Should I go, should I explain this right now? No, I'll explain that later. So if anyway, if that signal is ever fired, um, just 
call this this function and then I okay so while I was editing the video I realized at this point where I was describing or explaining what this uh, function did I confused even myself so I'm just gonna re-explain it here now that way it's not so damn confusing All right, so um, I created a, a, a function here that's going to assign the icons to the inventory slots um, when they're called so all I'm doing is I'm passing in the new item that we've We've, we have here and that item is going to have a node that's a child of the first one so the one that I'm calling is this one so all I'm saying is this item here get its child here and then this child I want you to get the next child that's attached to that if that makes sense so all I'm saying is new item which is the let me go here so all I'm saying is um, the new item which is this item inventory item here get its child which is the item button and then that item button has a child as well and I want you to get it so that would be the sprite icon here and the reason for that is because this icon is what I'm going to change um, when it's called that way it can be the peach seed or the cherry seed or whatever it is that I want it to be and then after that I have this right here the same thing it's the uh, it's grabbing the new item again the item slot and this one has a function called get item name and I want you to call it and all I want you to do is get grab the key that is currently on convert it to a string so it's going to be either the small sprinkler the apple seed or the peach seed or whatever I need that string as well and then I'm gonna have those bo both passed into this function here so when it's called all it's gonna do is get those two um, sprites and it's going to swap them out for whatever sprite they're supposed to be whether it be you know the sprinkler or the seed or whatever okay I think that should that's a better explanation than whatever the hell I gave last time okay hopefully it's the last that I have to do bye code of the panel group we're gonna get a child and I want you to go in from the iteration so these iterations all it's doing is going through the children one by one. So it's saying get child zero, get child one, get child two, and however many um, items that we have on our persons. In this particular case, we have three. So it's going to say get child zero, get child one, and get child two. And then I want you to add a child to that. And what these children are is the slots, as it says right here. I add items to slots. So we already created the slots before we call it the items we have them as you remember we added them all into the into our box container and those box containers um, now have children so the first child would be it's the first slot and then the second child would be yeah the first slot yeah so the first child would be the first slot second child would be the second uh, slot and then the ter third child will be the third slot and then all I'm saying is, um, if we have any objects, just add them to those slots and just do it one by one. Okay, so now let's explain what the select item and the assigned icon are actually doing. So, whoops. So as I said, um, within the selected item here, it's going to grab an object name. And that object name is whatever I told it um, whatever string that I passed it in this particular case I bind it the string of the small sprinkler the peach seeds and the apple seeds and all I'm saying is where's the selected at this is the assign here we are all right so that object that was that we passed in here I want you to say if the object type is equal to one so remember when I said the in, in the inventory here they have object types so in this particular case uh, if, let's say it was a sprinkler it would be type zero um, okay well I guess this one has to be um, the plants so if this isn't the sprinkler and it has the the type of what's it called uh, the plants or the seeds all I want you to do is get the parents 
and I know what you, you, you don't know what this is here, but um, what I'm asking it to do is get the state machine. And then within the state machine, we're going to get plant. And the way I figured this out was I just literally just gr grab parent and then hit print and then see what it, it gave me. So I know that this is going to be the state machine. And then within the state machine, which is right here, I want you to find the plant the plant node, and then I want you to call the current seeds in hand, and then pass in that object name. So if you remember, right here, the current seeds in hand. So now I'm saying within that inventory, I called it, and it's going to run all this code for me, and then it's going to return back the object. And that object will be either the seed, or it will be the sprinkler and then after that I want you to also get the mouse icon and again remember this is a name so if this was I don't know the peach seed it's gonna be both of those and then after that I want you to go back into the state machine and change the state to the plant state that way I can plant seeds and then the same thing actually happens over here but this one is for the place object so if it's a sprinkler then it's gonna do the exact same stuff Go get the state machine, find the place object state uh, right here, call its code, find object, and then get the mouse icon, and then change it to the placeable state. And then after that, if we ever select an item, I want to close the menu. I want to make sure that we're no longer paused, and then queue it free so it gets rid of it. Okay. And then, I, you see up here I skipped this, but um, we have a, another function called remove previous mouse icon. And all this is doing is it's just going to go into each of these states and it's just going to emit the remove icon um, signal. That way the old um, icon gets deleted and then a new one is taking its place. So if I had the, one of the seeds and I chose the sprinkler, then the seeds will be the seed icons will be deleted and then it will just replace it with the mouse in fact uh excuse me with the sprinkler so you also can see what i'm talking about right here so if i hit this you can see i have the sprinkler but if i go over to here whoops as you can see i now have the peach seed and it works perfectly whoops oh yeah ah, i forgot that i can add them <laughs> with the space bar. Okay, but that's what that's doing. Okay, so let's see here. What have I explained? Okay, so that's just the ready function. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> let's choose the process. Um, all the process is doing is it's just checking if I press the page down button, and if it did, just what is this? Pause is false, emit signal, Q free. Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. So this is just to make sure that I can shut down the, um, or turn off the um, inventory. Yeah, this is just to make sure that I can turn off the inventory if it's, if it's open. Um, we have another script here that allows me to open it up. And then this one here is just allow me to close it. All right, I'll look. Don't worry, I'll explain this thing here soon. Um, I don't know which one. Oh, I know what this is. This is in the inventory. Okay, the inventory script or open inventory thingy madagi here at the state. Okay, so let me just go and explain this. Okay, so I realized um, that I left a bug in while I was re-editing the video. So I'm just going to re-explain this portion here and then tell you what the bug is and then how to fix it. So what this code here is doing is it's getting the... Um, it's, get, it's selecting the very first object within our inventory. So, whoops. So as you can see here, when I hit the play button and hit the inventory, this is grabbing the very first item here, and then it's allowing us to select these. So that's what this code here is, is essentially doing. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the, the panel group, which is this right here, 
then we want to get the child um, and that's going to be item num focus this is going to be a zero and there's a reason why I have it set as a variable instead of just zero I'll explain that in a little bit and then after that I want to get child two so if you remember um, what's in the in the panel group is our slots so that's what this is doing this is getting our slot right here is getting the first slot and then it's gonna get the second slot and then it's gonna get the third slot and each of those slots has our inventory item right here which is two children away from the slot itself which is why I have get child 2 and then um, we also want to get the child of this item button so item uh, get child Excuse me. get child 2 is the inventory item and then we're just gonna get the child that's um, right next to it which would be the item button and the item button has a built-in function called grab focus and that grab focus um, is what's causing our button to be highlighted so that way the player knows um, which item is currently being selected in this case it'd be the small sprinkler so with that being said, um, well, I guess I'll explain um, why I have the item focused, which is actually in these input here. So I have a code or a function that is going to be checking our inputs, and all it says is if the input, or uh, excuse me, if the event is action press UI left, which is the left arrow on the keyboard, and the item focus is not less than zero meaning we're not at the end of our selectable I uh, uh, we're not at the end of our selectable um, inventory items then we can subtract the number from whatever our current item focus is so if this was one which would be the second item that we have we can go back to the first so I guess I should just let this on so essentially what that is saying is if we're um, if we're in zero and we press right we will add one which will give us this focus and if we're in the middle and we can subtract two or subtract um, one and it's going to bring us back to the previous slot so that's all that's doing right will add and left will subtract as you can see down here the very next code or the very next line of code is whoops let's not do that is that it is the exact same thing except this time it's checking to make sure that we are not greater than or equal to the iteration and the iteration is um, the number of items that we have currently and then we're going to minus off one because for whatever reason it still iterates at least one more time after it's done so that's why I'm subtracting one from it anyway so that's what that code does now the bug is if I don't have shift tab here if I don't have this little um, condition here if it has items it will crash if the player is ever out of items because it's gonna try to grab focus to an item that doesn't exist so if I do that put all zero and I hit the inventory you can see that it crashes so all I did was just add a nice little condition here which is right here has items and you can see here false and all it's saying here is that if has items is true we can do this and I trigger that within the get inventory items as you can see here if the inventory dot player inventory blah 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 is greater than zero then obviously we have at least one item and then else if we are if we don't have um, more than zero meaning we have no items at all then has items will go back to false and this code will never be triggered so that's um, that's a little bug as well as re-explaining what this code does so it's not so jarring all right I think okay now let's talk about the uh, open inventory so this here is also a state so whenever we press the inventory key it's gonna f it's gonna fire off a signal give me a second I'm gonna go back here it's gonna fire off a signal and it's gonna open up the uh, inventory for us 
So as you can see here, we have a variable called called inventory screen. It's going to preload the inventory screen, which is this thing right here. And then this is going to allow us to instantiate it later down the line, which I'm going to show you to do right now. Yippee. Okay. Um, actually, I need it one more variable called has been called, and that's going to be equal to false. And all this is just saying is, are we is are we currently in the menu or are we not? So I created a process function. I don't. I seem to have left myself a note here saying it doesn't seem to work in the input function for whatever reason. So I have to check it every single frame. But whatever. Um, anyway, so if the input is pressed of the page down and the has been called is equal to false has been called will now equal to true because we've called it. And then we're just gonna instantiate the screen. We're gonna to connect to the inventory close uh, signal. And then if this thing is ever triggered, we want to check our status, our, our inventory status. And then it, um, if this is uh, closed, then we're gonna make sure that we haven't been called anymore. We're gonna add the child and then we're gonna have pause equal to true. So if this, if we're ever in the inventory, um, the whole the whole world gets paused. Now I forgot to mention this, but because I have the pause on here, I guess I can um, talk about it now. Um, I want the inventory to be able to be interactable with, even though the game is paused. So as you'll see here, if I press this inventory button. As you can see, I can't move anywhere. I can't jump, can't walk, but I can create um, movement within the menu itself. And then when this is done, I can uh, finally walk and do whatever I want. So in order for you to have a function like that, um, just go to your um, inventory and where it says process, just hit always. And all this is gonna say is that if the uh, mode is ever paused, um, don't worry about it. This thing is always going to be interactable. And if one of the benefits of doing that is that all of the things that are within it are also going to inherit from it. So I don't believe that I need to do that for anything else. Yeah. So as long as as long as your objects are parent it to um an object that has the process mode set to always, they too will always be set to always as well. So even if the game is paused, they'll still get input and other other good stuff like that. Okay. Now what am I missing here? I did the mouse icon. Oh, sprinklers. Jesus Christ. Really need to learn how to spell. Changes the state machine. Talked about the screen, inventory items, and the sprinkler changes. Okay. So let's go to the sprinkler. If you remember, I had it so that the sprinkler would follow the player's uh, mouse movement. All I did was just get rid of that, that code. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much the long and short of it. Um, there was no need for you to follow the mouse because in the placeable object script, it was just going to take the position of the mouse or your strike box, respectively, depending on what you decided to do um, with the adding of the object. So if you decide to add it with the mouse, then it would take the mouse position. And if you decide to add it with the strike box, it would take your strike box position. So there was no need for the sprinkler to follow the mouse anymore because it was gonna get your position regardless. So that's was the only thing with that. I don't think I changed anything else with this at all. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. I think that is everything. I'm not 100% sure. I am probably like 5,000 years. Okay, we're at an hour and two minutes. <laughs> typical, very typical. But yeah, um. I think that will do all. Oh wait, I did not explain these seeds here. So 
um, with the plant seeds I also changed a little bit um, they also don't follow the mouse anymore um, eventually I'll use these this code for stuff but as of right now the only thing this does is um, it just has an area that interacts and that's about it this is was just to make sure that within the strike box if this area ever collided with it and it was within the plant group it would sh it would stop you from planting so I'm gonna go to the strike box here this doesn't work with the mouse for obvious reasons there is no collision box with it um, what is it? yeah here it is so if the area is in the plant group uh, it just checks if there's seeds and if there's seeds in there then um, yeah you can't plant them that's that's essentially all that is um, this is super easy to make it's just a sprite with an area and a collision and then a sprite sheet and that was that so yeah I think that's everything that I did since the last time I recorded <laughs> wait is there a error no there's no error beautiful so yeah um, I hope you found this useful. Um, again, this ain't perfect. Um, there is a reason why it took um, Concerned Ape there we go. five years to make this game. <laughs> As I am now learning <laughs> the hard way, there's a lot of very complicated systems at play and things are constantly being intertwined with each other, causing problems after you fix them, just to break them. But hey, that is game development in a nutshot. So yeah, um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I know people said that they wanted pest, but maybe I'll get to actually working on the plants themselves. So like if you were to water them and have them grow or something like that, we will see, we will see. All right, my children, until next time, farewell.